Star Wars is going through the ringer, everybody. It's going through the ringer. And there's some drama happening left, right, square root that some bitch coming back around. So, for our story tonight, ending the show, can we talk about Star Wars and our featured story of the night? <laughs> Pace yourself, thirsty daddy. Pace your. We'll lose GR in a minute Always too. Pace, bro. We might lose GR next. So, I want to talk. More ice for the drink. I I get I get here I can hear. Yeah, get that get that up. fucking ice, man. Mute mute We're... GR for fuck's sake. <laughs> no, oh, fuck everybody it. out there, there he is. if you're really watching sick. this show, if you're watching the show and you drink with us, please drink right now. Just drink right now. So, Star Wars. I'm gonna take one sip. Are they really making episode 10? Mm. They are, Queen. Episode 10 is coming. That's the whole thing with Rey. Rey is like training the new Jedi Order. That's what's happening. But I'm gonna, I'm, there's something else though I'm going to talk about right now about Star Wars. So that collect came up. And I've been watching. I watched, the, uh, I watched, the, I watched all three episodes. In the, uh, four episodes, I should say. And uh, I'll tell you this. Three. Three? Four. Four now. Four. Uh, I'll tell you this. Like... I get it what they're trying to do. And there's a lot of backlash on this show. Acolyte. People are like, Star Wars is fucking doomed. It's done. It's never coming back. And we said on Wednesday, I've been saying for a long time, let's do an R-rated Star Wars movie. Let's figure that out. And now Filoni came forward to say, he goes, hey guys, yeah, maybe we're going to do that. He said, that would be interesting. Sure, I mean, I don't want, you know, I, don't, I, I just want, I don't want to say we're going to do it, but it would be interesting. He said, overall, but he said, the bottom line is, whatever we do, it has to be really well done. And you fucking say that, Flooney, but like what you've been doing is not really well done. You're fucking pissing the fans off. You're pissing off the Star Wars community. And I get it. You're trying to do something different, which I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I like the acolyte. Uh, that might be, might be controversial, might be crazy, but the main actress. Uh, Amanda uh, Sten uh, Stanberg came forward and she says that the fans are causing intolerable racism on top of this because they're getting mad at her because of what's happening with the franchise. And to me personally, I'm like, I can't be mad about it. Whatever's going to happen, it's they're trying to do something different than Acolyte. You can't yell back at the fans. She made this whole video, this whole video and song where she yelled the fans called Disclosure. And I watched it and she said, happy Juneteenth. Here we are and all this shit. And I'm like, I get it. I get it. I totally get it. I totally get it. It's tough. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, I've had a few drinks, but I, I fucking totally get it. A lot of these people that are Star Wars fans, they have, it's not about who you are. It really isn't. It's not. I know you think that sometimes because it's easy as an actor to think that. It's so easy. It's not. They just have an idea for what the lore is based off the books, uh, what they've said in the movies, how it's supposed to be. And you as an actor are just going there and do a role. And you're very excited about it. And she said that they wrote the Acolyte for her to be something different. Which, honestly, I love difference. If Sean was here, he'd be like, let's find out their fucking taxes in their life. And I get that. It's great. Let's do something different. But the problem is... Sometimes actors get mad about things because you get mad because you heard so much shit about yourself. So you have to fire back. She made this video, this song and all that shit. And I think it's too much. I hate to say that, but I think it's too much. I think you're attacking the fandom too much. You gotta just, you gotta brush it off. You gotta brush it off, girl. You gotta brush it off. Disney he goes, huh, we'll brush it off tomorrow. We'll be fine. And we make more. And unfortunately, it's gonna hurt her career, I think. And, and, and what she says is not wrong. Some of the shit she says is not wrong, but some of it's too strong for what Star Wars is. We're again thinking about entertainment, value, life, what it means to be doing something like this. We're trying to have fun. We're kids at heart watching space pirates fight against each other. And I think what they did with the Acolyte was a lot of fun a lot of times. I get I get you going into like pirates, Popeye. Just saying. Pirates, fucking pirates, but they did change the dynamic a lot of ways by doing this, Sabrina. I know you, I don't know if you watched the acolyte yet, but I've been watching it, and it's like it's changed the dynamic. They made all of a sudden the force is different, a thread for these witches, and the witches also had like an immaculate conception for two other girls. They were like, well, the only person that was immaculate conception by the force was Anakin, so that's weird. People get mad about that shit, uh, but the thing is about what it comes down to is. When you try 
to fight the fandom, you lose. I hate to say that. I'm not saying like you lose wrongfully. I'm saying Disney, Star Wars, fans, it fucks everything up. And I've been watching this show and I think that we should just like focus on something different. Let's make the Darth Vader movie at this point, you know? Let's do something different that's cool that will bring the fandom back in. Let's not do stuff like trying to push the barriers with Star Wars. Let's find a way to bring the fans back in with the new generation. But they didn't do it with Acolyte. So think about controversy, GR. Have you watched Acolyte, GR? Yeah, a little bit. It, we'll talk about it a little bit the other day. We... You, I think Star Wars was a fantasy movie. Mm-hmm. And always has people, been. People in that ex, accept fantasy. And I'm sorry, I've had a few drinks too. Um, Late night cruise control, everybody. They they want everything to be perfect in their mind, whether they're straight, gay, bisexual, whatever. It doesn't matter. They want everything perfect. So because the woman had a immaculate conception, she can't be straight. It's something else. You know, that's bullshit. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> uh, get down, Darth. But get down, Darth. I mean, I don't immaculate conception doesn't have to do with straight or gay. It's just it's like it's no, like but Mother it, Mary and Catholicism. What I was saying, Sabrina, is in some people's mind it does. Because well, that's, it's, that's this is insane. all this all isn't real. It's all a a dream in their mind. And I to my my mind, I don't give a shit who you sleep with. I don't I really don't. I mean, but immaculate me, conception literally means that you did me. not have sex. So mm-hmm. you're not I'm, sleeping I'm with anyone. Sorry. Technically. I don't care what they say. Everybody has sex. Right. But I, immacul- you know, you the definition that- of immaculate conception is that there was no sex involved and you're pregnant. It's well, the, the only, I'm sorry, the only I don't documented... buy this whole immaculate conception bullshit. Sure, but like, the, do you buy the Bible? I mean, probably not. Like, nor the do Bible I. I'm is just one of the saying... greatest fictional stories ever written. Sure, but I'm saying, is that it's not the true. only other time you've heard of an immaculate conception? Like, that's the only. Anakin. The only... Immaculate conception never happened. Correct. I'm just saying the only time that it was, you know, put down on paper and believed to be fact was Mother Mary, who had been a virgin and was all of a sudden pregnant with baby. Did you buy that? And did so, I'm not saying I have to buy it. You don't have to buy it. I'm just saying that is what it means. It has nothing to do with gay or straight. Doesn't matter. There's no sexual intercourse to occur. But can an R-rated movie make that better? Like Star Wars, because it's fully as almost an R-rated movie yeah, to change it, make it different. The story, Brian, it that it make it more real. But is that what we need? You know, we need that though. Like, no, uh, well, I mean, it's so, it, it makes it more acceptable to a lot of people. It's always biblical, Star Wars. It's always biblical. But I, I say this, like, so they're going back and forth about it, and people are really mad about it. Act like people are really mad about it. And, um, and I, I just said this. I to the viewers if I offended you, but there you go. Well, Filoni oh. came forward, being like, we do it, we do it, we do, we would do a um, rated R, but it has to be right. But they're oh, they're fucking right. everything up as it is. Uh, the ancient Greeks and had miss bottom mac. Yeah, people are mad about sure. it. Sure. I saw videos online. People being like, uh, like Anakin, or they use uh, Hayden Christensen bitching about like I thought I was the only one, you know, and. I mean, it also changed a lot of the lore with this show, too. And so the fans are mad. But here's what I say. We should be trying to breach outside of what we had Star Wars before we should. But we should also, also use the, uh, how the Force works. The Force works a certain way. Let's just keep to that. And they've changed it a lot, too. Uh, it's unfortunate, but that's what it is. Long and prosper. <laughs> but 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 Filoni came forward and said maybe we'll do an R-rated movie. And this is what really this really spun the conversation for me because I was excited about an R-rated Star Wars movie. We talked about that with Sean and Mike on Wednesday. That sounds great. And now Filoni said it like let's do it. Uh, I might do it. Sabrina, would an R-rated Star Wars movie maybe like take these fandom that are going nuts about like all the they, they, they try to say like Disney's woke and all this shit. Will that suppress that or will that do nothing for the actual lore of Star Wars moving forward. 
I, I don't honestly I don't think an R rated situation is gonna make anything anything better. Right? Like they have this whole policy and things that they've been doing and you can't show blood and all the things and people are still, you know But Deadpool is doing that now. Correct. Um and it's great. However, like Star Wars has had this mold for a long time. The problem is Star Wars is doing what Marvel did. They're saturating this TV market because they had a hit with Mandalorian and now they're running wild. And that's the fucking problem. The problem is you get thirsty, right? Just daddy can tell us. Thirsty daddy knows. Um, you basically have a hit and then every, then they're like, oh, you know what? Let's make this series. Let's make that series. Let's do this. Let's do this. But And then all of a sudden, no one gives a fuck because it's all fucking crap. Like, you have to, like, so, okay, great. Mandalorian was great. Now, we don't need 94 spinoffs of Mandalorian. We don't need the Book of Boba Fett. We don't need fucking Ahsoka. We don't need fucking Acolytes. Like, just stop. Make a fucking movie if you want to continue the saga. So, I feel like people are just, it's it's oversaturation of the market, which is kind of the same thing that is happening with Marvel. And it's weird that DC is kind of trying to embark upon the same model after it's failed maybe they're like well we can do it better i don't know because peacemaker was a success i don't know i don't know i just feel like this is uh the, the the million tv shows is a mistake it's just a mistake it's too much you know mandalorian was great you should have stuck with that it's fucking it's just it's just oversaturation and and, and even yes do you think this is I'm sorry, guys. I am I'm intoxicated. Okay. Isn't this a case <laughs> of Hollywood days. in general being afraid to do the original? Um, the reboot, Gio? This, this I honestly well, think... What I mean, Brian, is as Sabrina said, we, we're, we're, we're soaking the market. Yep. The, U, it, the universe... Did, everybody's done it. But why are they doing, oh, let's do that because that sounds good. It's safe. Why it's not exactly. do something original? Uh, because I, if it's anyone, scary. Literally anyone who has ever watched the show knows that that is my number one argument against everything. And they feel like they've gotten wildly successful. Like Mandalorian like was a, a, a huge success. So now they're banking on that and making all of these fucking series. Also, mm, sounds familiar. <clears throat> Yeah, absolutely. And it's 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 just again, you know, a hundred percent playing the safe card. Hundred percent, GR, hundred percent. And they'd rather go with this, which might make minimal money instead of a shit ton of money, because it's guaranteed. You know what I mean? It's like it's money in the bank. Even if it doesn't do that great, it's still gonna make them money. And that's really, really fucking unfortunate. And what it, what it's doing is losing them viewers and money. And fans. Same I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not like a, I'm a, well, I mean, you know, I've, I've been a viewer, not a fan, but Mandalorian really, like I would walk by and see little baby Yoda. And I was like, oh my God, he's so cute. And then eventually I fell in love with baby Yoda and I watched the girl. entire thing. And I was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. It's so great. P pa uh, I love Pedro Pascal. Then he stopped even acting anymore. Someone else is in the suit. Like, it's like, it just, it just always gets too big for its britches. And you have to like at at a certain time, like do service for your viewers as opposed to, you know, doing service for yourself. But they'd rather do this and make a little bit of money <clears throat> than do something new and risk losing money. That's what corporations and, are, and, and that's super and risk fucked up. And it doesn't a lot of money us. because they came up with something good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I, again, I, my biggest my biggest comparison for this is Everything Everywhere All at Once. That movie was fucking insane. It was like a multiverse situation like no one had ever seen before, like in that respect. It was also very um, culturally aware. Like the, the threat of the culture um, of the daughter was insane. Like the, the things weren't accepted, which made it the, high, the stakes higher. Like it was, and it was a fucking amazing movie, but no one would take a bullshit like this and get, you know, a, a slight return. You know, A24, who is now actually, unfortunately, kind of turning a little bit more studio, 
Like they're following the norms more. They're not letting things happen the same way. Oh, okay. I don't really it's know like, what that means. You know, it's like what Brian and I were talking about before the show. Full Metal Jacket was a great movie. Yeah. For the first half One hour. Of my favorite. Oh, because it no. talked about boot camp. The rest of the movie was total bullshit as no, a I Vietnam vet. You want to see a good movie about Vietnam? Watch Platoon. Or I We Are think, Soldiers. I love Platoon. I don't I don't think that I don't think that the, the point was pr to portray exactly what happened. I think that it was more of getting a social point across. Full metal jacket was a piece of that crap. Is dumb. I'm sorry. You know. The boot camp section was accurate. The rest of it was pure BS. I, okay, I'm done. I'm sorry, guys. You hit you hit that hits a raw spot with me. Damn, no, skip no, it. I totally understand. I no one was there but you, so I don't have a right to tell you how it was. I'm just saying I don't think that the movie was too exactly per, to portray what happened. It was more to portray the duality of man. I'm sorry, I don't I don't agree with you on that because That's I've fair. seen them all, and they they wasn't even close. I, I lived through that era before you were you were <laughs> before I was existing. Well, you weren't in three cornered pants, but you were close. <laughs> Brian, you're muted. Okay. I can't hear your words you said. I will say the thing about Star Wars is this. The Star Wars thing is like, um, I just think like, you know, I've been asking for it. I think if you're going to try to change it, make it different, maybe go already to figure a way to make it work so it's different. Uh, I guess, you know, they're trying to latch in Disney again. Huh? We'll always hold on to it's Texas. What it's I'm meant sorry, to be. Brian. No, but Disney holds on to what what they think that's meant to be for family, kids, all the friends and the family, everybody else that comes in a neighborhood that walks down your street that you love and you say, hey, neighbor, what's going on? That's Disney. Uh, and so they don't want to go that route, but they did it for Deadpool. When Deadpool makes, when Deadpool makes, it's projected to make $200 million opening weekend. That's huge opening weekend. Oh, everyone wants to see that fucking movie. I can't wait. When, when that Yeah, when that happens, hopefully they have an idea. They're like, well, we'll let our other shows go down that same route we'll make that same money I, I and disney the house of mouse will fly R, dude i don't think it's because it's rated r i think it's because ryan reynolds is fucking it's epic. a matchup they're bringing matchup. they're bringing hugh jackman back mm -hmm. like there's a lot of things going on there's a lot of cameos a lot of buzz it's a totally different uh situation i in my opinion I I just think that it is their first rated R thing. So it's like for them, like as a business, they're they're like looking at it differently, you know what I mean? Right, but Deadpool was help. rated R good. and it was Sony. Yeah. It was still it's, rated uh, R. Yeah. Yeah, it was so it was. You can't change it at that point. No one's gonna fucking give a shit. But people are excited, I think, because they know they're gonna do the same kind of world, you know. They're not gonna hold back. Right. But that world didn't start with Disney. Like they're just no, it did not. the fucking no. moles, you know. They keep which keep they up that shit. Do. Making it happen, moving it forward. I, I don't think that that's what's making it so big. I think the fact that Hugh Jackman is coming back is huge. I think Ryan Reynolds is a really good marketer, and he's really good at what he fucking does. And he is fucking. He started buzz about this. Like no, you two love him. Years ago. I don't. I do love him. I am obsessed with him. He's amazing. He's my favorite person on the planet. Down as girl. A, as a celebrity goes. However, Down girl, it's yours. He, okay, thirsty daddy. How about you relax? Um, he literally. <coughs> what up, Brian? Mike, Sabrina. This. Oh, weird, Peppy. That was Peppy's drunk, clearly. Um Pump it up on he started publicizing this before there was even like Peppy, a nugget down. of anything. And that, when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, it's not coming out until 2024. And that was two years ago. So he has been working this train up for years and building up all of these things. It's it's marketing, dude. He built up all these things. Oh, this person might be in it, that person might be in it. People are posting cryptic uh, uh social media posts. Going fucking nuts like, about it. It was fucking smart. The the way that they went about it was fucking smart. Yeah. Guys, I think I drank a little bit too much. Me. Too. I think I think Peppy's right on that one. Yeah, Peppy drank too much. I feel like much. everyone has. I think we need to wrap this shit up because we're gonna I know. fucking in a fight. It's Friday. I'm Thank you all. A fight. I will I will say this overall. I think that uh what's been happening with the acolyte, and again, this is one of those things I, I really oh, wonder. That we that's what we were talking about. I'm sorry. 
Yeah, it's okay. Uh, but yeah, like what's been happening is like the fandom's going nuts, and I feel like I get it, but I'm also let's just try to be open minded about where Star Wars goes from here. Let's just try. Let's just try. I get it. And there's some fucked up shit. I will say episode four. How how the hell do you go back to Coruscant and appear at the same location at the same time once Madang go to Coruscant? That's a weird thing for me. Like they traveled right from that one planet to Coruscant, and but or, or right from that one planet where they were at before and they went higher. When Coruscant came back, that fucking shit's ridiculous. The time frame is fucking bullshit. This new villain again. We don't have cysts like that back then. Uh, but again, there's people not respecting the lore. That's fine. It sucks. But that's what we have right now. So respect the lore, Disney. Find the people that understand it so continuity will stop you from getting all this hate because continuity will kill you. Uh, and I hope that's moving forward the rest of the season is good, but I know people fucking hate it. So uh, we'll talk about more. We'll talk about more because I'm interested to see how this fucking show ends. Last episode, we had the, the Sith Lord attack. Everybody else... Flew back like it was nothing. I'm like, you said there's no Sith around at this point, but this guy's fucking the strongest ever. He's like stronger than Darth Vader. Okay. Good to know.